In the second video of 6.2, our learning objectives are going to be use the metal activity series to compare the reactivity of metals with water and acidic solutions, and write equations and half equations for acid metal reactions. This is going to tie into these science understandings, so the reactivity of a metal affects its ability to react with other chemicals. We need to be able to investigate the reactions of various metals with water and acidic solutions compare the vigour of reactions of different metals with their position on the metal activity series and write equations and half equations for reactions between a given acid and a nominated active metal. Firstly, in terms of reactions of metals with water, we say that the more active metals have the ability to react with water. Uh, less active metals do have some tendency, but we normally need to provide uh, additional energy, so heating the reaction. To, to get it going. These reactions are known to produce hydrogen gas and alkaline solutions. We can generalize this as a metal reacting with water goes to produce hydrogen gas and a metal hydroxide. For our first example, we're going to look at calcium. So calcium can react with water um, to produce hydrogen gas and calcium hydroxide. We can break this down into half equations, but it's not essential to consider this. What we can see is water, in actual fact, undergoes reduction. So that makes water the oxidizing agent. Water gains two electrons. It forms the hydrogen gas as well as the hydroxide ions in solution. The calcium, on the other hand, is undergoing oxidation, making it the reducing agent. So calcium metal uh, gets oxidized to form calcium ions and loses the two electrons. We can then combine the two equations together. And essentially, this equation here, this net ionic equation, is effectively the same as this equation up the top here. All that we've done differently is separated the two ions, um, but we know that we can associate them and just represent it as such here. Second example, uh, looking at sodium. So again, sodium being a metal reacts with water known to produce hydrogen gas and a metal hydroxide, which is sodium hydroxide here. Looking at the half equations, we already know what happens to the water, so it gets reduced, forms hydrogen gas and hydroxide ions. The sodium metal will become oxidized and forms sodium ions and an electron. We know that we need to um, balance the number of electrons lost and gained, so when we have our net ionic equation, we'd have to factor that in. So we've got two waters reacting with two sodiums, produces hydrogen gas, two sodium ions, and two hydroxide ions. Again, these two equations effectively being the same as one another. In terms of acid metal reactions, the more active the metal, the more vigorous the reaction. The general equation for this is an acid plus a metal will produce hydrogen gas and a salt which will be in solution. For the reactions of acids with metals, we're going to consider the firstly the balanced formula equation, and we're going to specifically look at how we can break that up into the half equations. So firstly, hydrochloric acid reacting with magnesium, we can see here HCl with um, Mg, going to produce H2, and the salt being magnesium chloride. Our half equations, um, the first one, we can see the hydrogen ion as part of the acid is the key component. And what we can see is that, is that it's becoming reduced. It gains two electrons in total to form H2. So that's the reduction half equation. The oxidation half equation involves magnesium forming magnesium ions in solution. So magnesium solid forming Mg2 plus in solution and two electrons being lost. We can see here the number of electrons gained and lost is equal, so we can just combine these half equations. And our net ionic equation, we can see, is going to look quite similar to the balanced formula equation. However, we've omitted these chloride ions, which just remain in solution. So our net ionic equation just removes this, and it focuses on the key components in this reaction, that being the H plus and the magnesium reacting. Example two, uh, again, hydrochloric acid, but this time with aluminium. Writing our formula equation, we can see that six lots of HCl react with two Al, 
to produce 3H2 and two lots of AlCl3. Again, breaking this up into the half equations, the key species being the hydrogen ions forming H2, and then the aluminium metal forming aluminium ions. The first one, same as previously, so 2H plus in solution, gaining two electrons to form hydrogen gas. That's the reduction half equation. The oxidation half equation being aluminium uh, oxidizing and forming aluminium ions, losing those three electrons. In this case, the electrons aren't equal, so we need to multiply each half equation by an appropriate coefficient. So in this case, we would need to multiply this top one by three to get a total of six electrons gained. And for the oxidation half equation, multiplying by two, and this will ensure that the number of electrons lost and gained are equal. Summarizing that in our net equation, we would therefore end up getting 6H plus plus 2Al goes to produce 3H2 and 2Al3 plus. Example three, third and final example, sulfuric acid and lithium. We've got here H2SO4 plus Li producing H2 and Li2SO4. We take this uh, formula equation break it up into half equations. The important component in the acid is the H+. So this is the key change that's happening. H+, becoming reduced to form H2. And then with the lithium metal, this undergoing oxidation and losing the one electron, the electrons lost and gain unequal. So we would need to multiply the oxidation half equation by two. And if we write that our net ionic equation, we end up getting 2H plus plus 2Li going to produce H2 and 2Li plus. That's it for the second and final video of 6.2 metal reactivity. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.